Hi, dear friends. How are you all doing? I hope you're all fine. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for returning back here. If you are a returning subscriber, may God bless you for your love and your support. But if it's your first time here on my channel, hello, welcome to my channel. Please, before you leave, remember to subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on that notification bell. You will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I promise you, you will always enjoy every content that I upload in this channel. So friends, I know if you are on online dating apps searching for the one, you have been there for quite some time or not even so long. And whenever I come here with success stories or whenever you are on social media, for example, you see interracial couples or you see people married, they have found love, you ask yourself lots of questions. And some of the questions that you ask yourself that might come into your mind is that how do these ladies succeed to find love? Bella came with a success story here on her channel and you all are inspired but at the same time you're asking yourself but how how did she do it <laughs> even one time i remember there is a story i shared and i saw a very very weird comment someone commented and the story was about a ugandan lady who found love online a week before was a tanzanian lady who found love online and a week before that it was a success story of a kenyan lady who found love online but this lady who commented was a nigerian lady so she was like oh my god these east african ladies they use juju don't even listen to them tell you oh i found love it wasn't easy blah 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 no they use juju <laughs> So have you ever thought that this lady who succeeded, they used juju or voodoo <laughs> to find love online? <laughs> if you have been thinking like that, then watch today's video. Some of you got questions like, I have been on online dating apps, but guys have been ghosting me. I don't know what is wrong with me. What can I do? And sometimes you get scared to keep on searching because you know every guy that will come and start chatting with you will eventually ghost you. So maybe you'd like to hear from a lady who succeeded, was she ghosted too? And what does she think about being ghosted? Another question that you can be asking yourself, you single mothers, like I am a single mother and it has been really difficult on online dating apps. I can't find a guy who will give me the attention. Once I mention my babies, <laughs> these guys run. They don't want to hear anything about me. They lose interest because I am a single mother. Will I really be able to find love online as a single mother? And those single mothers that succeeded on online dating apps, how did they do it? I would really like to know what helped them. What are those tricks or tips that helped them find love on online dating apps as single mothers? And this one is from all ladies that are currently dating. Maybe you found that guy on online dating apps and you are in a long distance relationship. So you would like to hear from a lady who succeeded. How did she handle their long distance relationships? What are those tips and tricks that helped her and the boyfriend in their long distance relationship? But not only that, guys. Also, this is from ladies that have been on online dating apps. You found a guy, all is good. You started chatting and the guy seems to be the one. Yes. <laughs> Actually, it reached a point you were planning to come to Bella and share your success story. But then, boom, the guy disappears on you. He does not talk to you anymore, meaning the relationship ended. So you are there asking yourself, hmm, 
what is wrong with me? That guy seemed really, really serious. What made him run away? So dear beautiful ladies, that is why I am here for you to answer all those questions. But I won't be answering those questions myself, not at all. Yes, today's video, I am going to be collaborating with these beautiful sweet sisters that their faces are not new. <laughs> not at all because they shared their love stories with you guys here on my channel some will be with their loved ones with their husbands <laughs> talking to you but some will be alone giving you the tips and tricks on how they succeeded on online dating apps but that's not all your sister is here <laughs> after they have talked I'll also come in with my own tips <laughs> that will help you find love on online dating apps or I will be answering your questions, <laughs> the questions that I told you before, so I'll be answering them. Yeah, stick here till the end. It's gonna be hot, I think hotter, because right now it's really, really hot here in Italy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> ah, let me cool down and then we continue. <laughs> And by the way, guys, before I forget, <laughs> these beautiful sisters of ours that will share with us their tips, their tricks, will be answering your questions, you know, <laughs> you'll get new, new, new tips from them. Some are content creators. So if it is going to be your first time seeing them, please help me go support their YouTube channels because they've got good, good content that you all will enjoy. So I'll be writing their channel names down there so that you can check them out after this video, okay? And now let us begin with our sister number one, who is, guess guys, <laughs> Leticia from We Believe In You. If you remember Ian and Leticia's story, Leticia is Ugandan, Ian, the boyfriend, is from America. Yes, guys. So let us hear from Leticia. What are those things that helped her find love on online dating apps? So welcome, dear Leticia. Hello, everyone. This is Leticia here from We Believe in You YouTube channel. And I'm excited to be with you all here today. I know some of you recognize me from Bella's previous video. And... Um, those who don't know me, I found to love online this year and I'm ready to share with you some practical tips. My tip number one is that uh, I was ready to date. I was in that place where I was emotionally, physically and mentally stable. Yeah, I was uh, after my heartbreak, my first heartbreak, I gave myself enough time to heal. Yeah, so by the time I downloaded date, a dating app, I was in that place whereby I was ready to start a new relationship with someone when I'm free from any heartbreak, confusion and all that. Yeah, that really helped me a lot. Yeah, so my advice is if you're out there and you are going to start online dating, make sure you are not from any heartbreak, you are not uh, distracted by anything. You know, you are in that place where you know that you are ready to start dating. Yeah, so um, my point number two is that I had to, to know what I want and uh, be selective with the people that I chat with. Because after realizing that I was wasting my time and energy on people that were not offering something serious, I had to get my notebook and write down what questions that what questions am I supposed to ask men that will help me not to waste my time on people that are no are just on are just on dating apps to waste my time. So after realizing that I got my notebook called questions and every time I would interact with someone who would reach out to me or someone that I would text first and they get back to me, I would ask them questions. What are their intentions on the dating app? And uh, there are things that I, questions that I asked them that helped me to know that this person is on a dating app for serious reasons or is just here going to waste my time. And I'll be like, okay, 
I'm going to cut out this one. I think this one is is at least on on the pay on my pages, you know. Yeah, so that one helped me a lot to finally find true love on a dating app. Yeah, so uh, my point number three is that uh, I used to update my profile once in a while. Every month I used to update my profile. Yeah, um, if when I joined online dating, um, my the profile that I wrote wasn't really interesting. So, and um, you know, I had to every, every time that I would read other people's profile, I'd be like, wow, this this person's profile is really interesting. And I would read mine and be like, oh my god, that is why I'm not getting the results. So it is very important to write a very good profile. A profile that will attract someone, someone's attention, come and reach out to you. So that one is very, very important, my dear ladies. Yeah, so my point number four is that um, I have to be very patient. Yeah. Being patient is very necessary, especially when you are doing online dating. Yeah, it's okay to take your time. Yeah, it's not a race. I had to understand that it's not a race. <laughs> yeah, because um, I had to take some breaks, especially when online dating became overwhelming for me. All I wanted was, you know, someone who understands and compliments me. So I had to understand that it's not about rushing because at that moment when you're rushing, you're in pressure, you're, you know, you're watching Bella's videos. Oh, this one, she's from Zambia. She found a Dutch guy. You're like, oh my God, how do these guys get this man? <laughs> I know sometimes these successful online dating stories can make you feel like you are failing. But let me tell you something. Online dating needs patience. You have to be very patient and know that your time is coming. Yes, so patience is really needed and it pays off. I'm very sure I'm the living proof. And uh, uh, my point number five is that um, I had to understand that um, rejection is protection. Yeah, so sometimes I would... Uh, get people that would reach out to me and talk to me after like a few weeks they ghost me or they just act like they are not up to something serious and i would feel bad it would make me feel really 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 bad and uh, i thought maybe online dating is not for me but um yeah I, I was very patient anyway and had to understand that maybe it's happening for a reason you know so sometimes when people reject you, when people ghost you on a dating app, just take it easy. Thank God that that person has left your life in time. You know, they're not go They are paving a way for someone better. You should be happy when someone ghosts you. Thank God, be like, thanks to God, this person has left my life. They are paving a way for someone better. And um, yeah, so <laughs> don't take rejection seriously. It's for a reason, I'm very sure. So, and another thing, pray to God. God, God is there. God will answer your prayers. So, uh, those are the few tips that I applied that made me uh, finally find true love on, on a dating app. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there are very many tips that I use, but for now, the very main tips that I can tell you that those that i applied and that really worked for me yeah so um in conclusion i would like to send my heartfelt gratitude to bella for giving me this opportunity to share my practical uh practical tips that i applied um and helped me to find true love on a dating app so guys be open-minded be yourself and I know love will finally come to you yeah so guys see you bye so to our number two dear sweet sister is charity from charity and darren's channel on youtube charity is a nigerian lady was a single mother of one before finding love on online dating apps and found love with an irish guy from ireland <laughs> yes so from charity to my single mothers please sit well 
and take notes <laughs> on how she succeeded to find love on online dating apps as a single mother. Welcome, dear Charity. Hi guys, my name is Charity from Charity and Barons channel on YouTube. Thank you so much, African Bella, for giving me this opportunity to do this collaboration with you. Darren and I met on online dating apps. I'm here to talk about the simple things that helped me, what Darren saw in me that made him take me very seriously as a single mom to want to take it to the next level. I'm a single mom of one. I was a single mom of one before I got married. I have a three years old son. If you have not seen my story on how I met Darren, on how Darren and I met, African Bella did a story on that, a video on that is on our channel. We also did a story on that as well on my channel. So you can look for that and watch that. So let's get into the topic because I don't want to make this video so, so long. When I was going on the app, I knew what I wanted. I wasn't on the dating app for money. I wasn't on the dating app to be a player. I was I was there for something serious. When I started chatting with Darren, the first thing I asked him was, what are you looking for on the app? Like, what are you looking for? Like, I wanted him to define our relationship from the start, which he actually did. After Darren defined the relationship, like what he wanted, we moved on to the talking stage. During our talking stage, Darren and I spoke for four and a half months before he came to see me in June. We started talking in January, that's the middle end of January, and Darren came to see me in the first week of June. So during those times we were doing the talking stage, Darren never sent me money, I never asked him for money. It was all about getting to know ourselves, getting to know each other, what we like, if we were kind of compatible. Like I didn't have some problems with money, you know, but I knew how to manage myself. Me for once, I don't really know how to ask people for money. Most especially if I'm get, trying to get to know you, I don't bring money in shape. When you start asking someone for money, someone that has not even met you, in the back of his head, he's going to be like, this one, I've not met this lady and she's asking me for money. How is it going to be like when I meet, meet her or when we start dating? Anytime that I was talking to me, I was always available. Yeah, because I noticed one of the problems people have in long distance relationship is when you're, when you're in a long distance relationship, you don't match yourself. One of the problems is when this guy is always trying to connect to you and you're not always available, it's a problem. It's, you're trying to discourage him for him to say, oh, probably this person has someone else or this person is going out to do stuff they shouldn't do. When you're not available in a long distance relationship, you know, it discourages this guy. If this guy is thinking about taking it to the next level when he meets you, he will be discouraged because you're not always available to talk. He doesn't understand you. He's confused when he thinks about where you guys are, like your relationship, where it's going to lead to. He's confused. So the aspect of um, money, the aspect of communication, not always available when this guy wants to talk to you. One of the things I try to avoid is I try to make him not suspect me. I try to make him know that, yes, I'm sincere. Yeah, I'm always available. Since you always like to call me for us to talk, I'm always available. Even when my phone went faulty, you know, Darren never sent me money to buy any phone, you know. Even when he offered, I was like, no, because you know one thing, you've not met someone and you're trying to offer you something and sometimes when you say yes, there's something they call see finish. You give this person that opportunity to see you finish. But if this person offers you and you say no, they you know, they will be so comfortable to want to be like this person is not after money. This person is after something really, really genuine. This person is after love. She gets. So that was how it was for me. I just made the relationship based on getting to know each other. I don't care about what you're gonna offer me. Yeah, you're gonna offer me when we are at that stage marriage when it's very very serious yeah you're gonna do all that but then during the talking stage money was not involved gifts was not involved you know even when he offered to help with my phone i rejected it because one when i met darren i was working i was caring for myself i'm a single woman i was caring for my son if you don't know about my story you can go and watch my story 
I was a single mom who was taking care of her son all by herself, doing everything all by herself with no one. So when Darren came into the picture, I didn't take all my financial burden and keep it on him. No, I never asked him for a dime. Even when he offered to do some certain things for me, I told him no because I was trying to make the person see that, yeah, it's just all about the love. For me, I'll say these things basically helped, you know, make Darren to see me and, you know, want to spend the rest of his life with me. Aside from liking me, of course, for you to want to spend the rest of your life with someone, you will like them for so what you see, the pictures and everything. They must fit into the qualities of what you're looking for in a woman. They must, okay, maybe you see a busty looking woman, you know, the way their face is, you like it. And then you came, you saw, and oh, you like this person actually. It's what you've seen online, and you like it. And then you see their attitude, the way they behave towards you on the phone, the way you guys communicate, you see it, you like it. You know, and you'll be like, the man will be convinced that, yes, this is the person I want. If you like this video, give it a like, comment, share, comment your experience. Most especially as a single mom, what you think of these things I've said, you know, if it's working for you or not. Currently, we're in long distance marriage because we're waiting to close the distance. We'll be updating you guys about her journey so far, trying to close the distance, what we've done so far, you know, the processes and all that. If this is what you would like to see, please follow, turn on the notification mm -hmm. bell so that you get to follow our journey and also when we close the distance. So, until the next one, bye. So, our third couple, <laughs> we have our dear sweet sister from Nigeria. Her name is Chex, was a single mother of one before finding love on online dating apps. <laughs> yeah, and found love on online dating apps with an Italian guy, my brother-in-law, <laughs> Leandro. So Chex will be sharing with you the tips and tricks that helped her find love on online dating apps. And also will be asking Leandro some questions. And through Leandro's response or answers, you are going to learn a lot as someone who is on online dating apps searching for the one. So welcome, Chex Leo. Hello guys, my name is Chex and this is my husband, Leandro. Yeah, I am Nigerian and he is Italian. We met on dating sites called Badu. I think by now you might already have come across our story on Bella's um, channel. So we just want to say a big thank you to Bella for this collaboration. It is our honor to be here to talk with you people to share our experience on dating sites again because we know you guys might have seen our story in the past. So Bella, we are happy for this collaboration. We never knew each other, went on dating site, met each other, fell in love. So I believe a lot of you are also looking for something like that. So yeah, here we are. Whatever we are going to share today, we hope that it helps you build courage for you to know that there is always the right man for you out there. So today we are going to do like a memory lane. We will be asking Leandro <laughs> some questions. We will share the things, our experiences on dating sites, the things we saw in each other and the things that led us to I do. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. We are not going to be here to preach to you guys that oh we just joined dating site and everything was easy no it wasn't it was a roller coaster it was really hard yeah i was on dating site for seven months he was one month on dating site we will be asking leandro some questions so you guys can know maybe i'm hearing also for the first time goodness maybe yeah. <laughs> one thing you have to know on dating site is that you're not the only one there and there are a lot, a thousand, looking for mm. same thing. There were a lot of women on dating sites. And yeah. before also you met me, yeah. you, we were chatting mm. with a lot of ladies, right? Yes. You saw a lot of ladies. What made you choose me among all the ladies you chatted on dating sites? I was attracted by you till the day you made me understand that you were starting to feel something for me also, no? I you did. Were, you were attracted. When you say, hey, Imagine. Are, you, are, you, are, you, hey, are you really tired by me? I understand that moment. Also, you, you were starting to 
I cannot say feelings for sure were not. Yeah, we were early stage. It early was not feelings. We were... But you were attracted by me also. So I said, okay, let me know her better. Ah, okay, guys, I'm going to explain that. Maybe my husband's English is not so perfectly well because he's Italian. He's still learning English. Okay, what happened is for his side, I'm just going to say what's, you know, just to round up things. Um, we were at this talking stage. That is the early stage when you meet a guy on dating sites and you're chatting. You've already introduced yourself and you think everything is moving well. And all of a sudden, he ghosted me. He stopped talking with me for like three days. I will send a message, nothing. He will read, he will not reply. Just, <laughs> just like that. It wasn't good for me. I was wanted. <laughs> and and that, that time, that particular time, I've connected with him. You know, when you're flowing with someone who we already one month in the talking stage. We were not in a relationship yet, but we That's have been talking. Talking, yes. But all of a sudden, he disappeared. He ignored me. I would send a message. He did not. So I put out a message say, Hey, I think this is not fair for both of us. Mm. If you're busy, you could at least send a message and instead of ignoring me. But if you're not ah, interested, yes, I remember because you were like complaining. Yeah, like, I was complaining. Yeah, exactly. hey, you had to reply. You and I, what exactly. I replied to you. And hey. I said, and I said, <laughs> yes, baby. And then I said, if you're not interested anymore, kindly let me know instead of ignoring me. And I just sent it to him. But immediately I sent that message. I think it took him. 30 minutes to reply sometimes i don't know if you have experienced it like when you're talking with a guy and all of a sudden they ghost you before you ghost them i would advise that you don't bombard them with messages or calls or don't do that maybe you can just state a message just like i did if the person is interested maybe surely they will reach back to you i picked you for one reason that is because you were different from other people I chatted. You will not rest. <laughs> <laughs> and our conversation connected. It was all about, it was personal. I had chatted with some people and the next day they are telling me, I love you. You know, also when I told people I had a baby, they don't even oh, care to it. ask me After that part. After two days I heard from girl, oh, I love you. Exactly, <laughs> and you were the only person that we didn't mention love, we didn't mention relationship, but we were still talking about um, a mature way. Yes, a mature way, mm -hmm. normal conversation. How is life over there? Funny, mess, funny, so everything. We, we jump from serious to funny. Yeah, so he, you were the person that wanted to know me deeply. The next question here is. Do I have those qualities you wanted in a woman? Yes. Day by day, yes. I discovered in you the quality I was looking for. If you remember, I told you, hey, what I straightforward. Mm -hmm. I, I, I tell you immediately what I want from my woman. Is this, 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 this. It's not like a rule, but yeah. I, I reach the age I don't like to waste, waste exactly. time. Exactly. If it will work, it will work. If it's not, it's so not back to It's necessary. usual to pretend I'm Superman and you are Wonder Woman. Yeah. Man. Be free, be yourself. Uh, if you have this quality, uh, I have the quality you're looking for. We can match, we can click. Uh, uh, what exactly happened? I actually wanted a man that will accept me for who I am and not trying to change me. And he is the man that did that. So, yeah. That is what that is why I knew that he's the one. What makes me exception Choose. from other ladies you chatted with? The transparency, the truth. You were not uh, pretend, you were yes. real. There is something maybe I didn't perceive from other girls. Yeah. He is one person that showed me 360 of his life. I was not only looking for just a man on dating sites. I didn't just go for the physical things. I also wanted to know my man just in case. I also want to see the bad part, which I saw. He showed me shake the horse. <laughs> he showed me really, really tough time. He showed me the arguing part. I could also piss him off. 
to see how we react i did that on purpose yeah. and to see if truly uh, something it comes to the end of we getting married how will this man react with me so i tested him a lot of times i tested him push him to the wall to see how he reacts he did he never pretended to me he reacted i pushed him to a point of conversation where we could exchange what fast. we did we were transparent since someone show also the bad side not yeah. only the good side exactly also i tested him financially to see okay if something comes out will he pass something like that well he did pass it and yeah that is when i totally fell in love with him and i said okay this is the man okay with him i was totally myself i could wake up with my crazy hair and he would tell me you're beautiful the same and yeah so, that that made me love him more be free to be yourself yeah always 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 be yourself how does it feel to be married to a black Nigerian lady. It's a different mentality, different culture, but I can see the perfect match is an interracial couple. Even if it's not easy, yeah, it's of not course. easy. It's got different mentality. We, we play all the time. We are, we, we are, we love all the time. As me being a single mom on dating site, was it a problem for you trying to be with a single mother on a dating site? Oh, was it me? No, it was not a problem. Okay, so it doesn't matter if there's a single mother out there, you will truly have a man that mm -hmm. loves you. I know it's not easy coming from a place where I was. You because could see someone that doesn't want a child, it's no problem. Just know that that man is not for you. you. Any man that loves you automatically loves your child. And let me tell yes, you sir. this, any man that doesn't love your child and they tell you they love you, there's a problem. Please don't go for it. There is a problem. It cannot work. It will not work. Cannot you work. always have to put your daughter or your son Before, or your yes. children. Before. Before you. Yes. Okay. That is why I always advise people that when you meet that person, and always sure, tell. You have to be sure. Exactly. Really. Yeah. Because maybe in that moment they say yes. Yeah. Yes, no I problem. Love, love, love. Always tell them you have a child. And how you will know if the person truly cares about all your conversation will revolve you and the child. It will revolve the child and you and the person. The Another thing I want to say quickly, your partner is not entitled to take responsibility of your child. Don't push responsibility of your child to him. The man that loves you will support you and support your child try as much as you can to handle things on your own without always bringing <clears throat> your baby in front of situation all the time i never brought my baby in front of any situation during the time we met was during covid things were hard there were times i wasn't having it my husband then boyfriend could ask me what is wrong have you eaten i never said like i'm going through stress of school fees or i'm going through stress of my daughter not shopping for clothes no he could sense it and he could say okay i want to send you something for food i could use some money when he sent it i could use for money on my own and pay for my daughter's school fees without involving him giving money for school fees i never ask sure. i never ask but he always knows it was me I was asking. exactly he always asked me so it's advisable not to ask sometimes for help there eh? but allow him to ask you if he asks you yes accept the help there is a way you will push responsibility to a guy even if he's in love with you he will think twice so allow the man to be the man any man that loves you knows that you need something and he will definitely do it so don't use too much responsibility also and chase a man know how to balance things sometimes let me send you something you accept freely accept when he's willing to help except the case is critical before you can ask also for money don't make it a character by asking 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 you can lose someone this is just the truth <laughs>
that is it i hope you're smart i hope you're wise enough to know how to balance things from the moment we click and from the moment i knew i wanted to spend the rest of my life with this man what i did nobody knew about this just my sister I could wake up every 1 a.m. I will call his name. I will kneel down. I will pray. And I will tell God, this is the man I love. This is the man for me. I never stop praying, guys. Prayer is the key to everything you want. Don't just be naive. Don't think your beauty can do it. Don't think, oh, my conversation can do it. Listen, over overconfidence bent crayfish i don't know if you understand <laughs> i continued praying till the day we said i do and even before he met me i guess it's because of my prayer that god sent him to me also <laughs> okay. because the devil is a liar sometimes you have something and when you're relaxed he takes it out of you so please prayer is the key never stop praying this question is how is the marriage life for us marriage has been wonderful marriage has been good this is best of our lives we, you, yeah? each day is going yeah, better yeah, at the beginning we were trying to adjust because we never lived together and then now is really really better and good i would say is very much wonderful because we live in peace and each day as day goes by is exactly so we play we, we talk, play a lot we guys the secret of mm. everything both in marriage and in long distance in everything is talking conversation exactly. conversation is nothing to miss you have to talk a lot if you talk things out and yeah we wish you a happy successful story and we can't wait to hear good news from you people and if you're a Let single mom me. yeah if you're a single mom don't bother there is a man for you just practice what we say don't give, up. Don't give up if you're searching on dating site I never give up it, yeah. it's never easy I you will see she, the bad ones you will see she the was good ones. To me. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you were lucky we were lucky for each other anyway yes, exactly. but it's never easy you will see the one that will piss you off you will see the one that doesn't match what you want you will see the one that will ask you for nude you will see this one that just f boys but never give up there is a particular person for you no matter how long you have stayed know that you have the right dream, man. follow it exactly never give up visualize what you want and then be happy and pursue it i hope our story inspires you i hope you find that perfect person for you and we wish you good luck we wish you safe findings yeah to remain blessed and thank you again bella bye everyone shout out yes ciao we love you <laughs> so friends our fourth couple you know this couple because i shared their story very recently <laughs> which is of Safi and Alex. Safi is from Congo and Alex is from Holland, a Dutch guy. They did not meet on online dating apps, but they are an interracial couple. And I know most of you here are so interested in interracial dating. That is why I brought Safi and Alex back to share with you those beautiful, beautiful, amazing tips and tricks that helped their relationship to work and guys because Safi is a woman of faith it's not that Leticia is not a woman of faith she is <laughs> that's why she told you you have to pray also charity also checks all they are telling you pray 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 but Safi talks about faith even on her channel so I told her please dear sister talk to our sisters on how to pray because nothing beats prayers guys we all know that that is why everyone that has found love on online dating apps will tell you pray 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 but sometimes you ask yourself how can i pray so safi is here also for that welcome dear safi and alex Hi darlings, how are you doing today? I hope what I will talk about here today will encourage, inspire and obviously motivate you. So how did we keep a long distance relationship? How did we maintain it? 
Wow, darlings, it takes a lot of work, but it doesn't have to be complicated at all. The first thing we did was commitment. Once you are committed to each other and you know what you are in for, it makes everything easy as compared to one um, thinking that we are all in and the other one thinking that, okay, I'm still trying to see where things are going. That is not what we did. We spoke about where we are together. We spoke about where we are heading. We spoke about how long we're going to stay in this long distance relationship before we make the next step to marriage. So all of those information, we shared it prior. And also we spoke about it during the relationship and it made it even stronger because we knew we had a goal, which was obviously marriage. We kept connected. That was the most important. We were always connected. FaceTiming, WhatsApp, Skype, you name it, whatever electronic we could get together, it was used. And at times when Habi will work late and he'll get back to his place, I'll wait up in South Africa because that's where I was waiting from and he was in the Netherlands. So what happened What would be like he'll come back from work and he will make himself a small meal and when we FaceTime, when we talk, we are eating together. Yes, I'll be eating at that time because I need that connection with him. I need that emotional attachment with him. And he's going to talk to me about the day at work, what happened. And this teaches you to listen, to really, really listen. Okay, and I'll also share my part of things and how my day was and with that we just help each other if he had a bad day i will try and lift him up if i had a bad day he will try and lift me up and we spoke about his long-term goals and his short-term goals yes i asked him that and when i knew that as well it made everything also very very easy what i mean by long term is okay so how long do you want to be in this relationship and what are your short terms? What, what projects do you have to complete in, in short term and what projects do you have to complete in the long term? Connection and commitment played the part in our relationship. You need to nurture each other because the same way as us women, we want to be called. We want to be checked in. If I tell you I'm not feeling well, you want to check, you want to be checked in every three hours. You want him to phone you and ask you how you are doing. That is the same way they also want to feel. So what you do, what you do, what you receive is what you have to give as well. So when he will phone me and be like, oh my goodness, I've got such a bad headache today and I'm at work and I don't know what time I'm going to finish. It's hectic here. I will check in as well and be like, babe, how's the headache? Did you take something? Did you eat something? How about you just um, not go in tomorrow? You check on each other, you know, em emotionally, you need to be there. You need to be emotionally matured. You need to be mentally matured because there will be fights. That is why you need to avoid texting and always focus on FaceTiming. That is very, very important when you are in two different countries and you are in a relationship because anything can be mixed, translated via texts, anything. So we avoided that very, very much. And when we had a fight, we tried by all means to always sort it out before we could go to bed. That is very important. The enemy hates marriages. The enemy will use anything to destroy what you are building together. So also I kept very quiet about it. My family was aware about it. But my friends, yeah, not so much because I just needed things to mature to a certain level. Yeah. And my family only found out about it also in a later stage because I 
just wanted things to mature before I could start talking about it. So keeping things to yourself is very, very, very important. It's not to say that you're thinking it's not going to work out. No, no, it's not that. The enemy attacks when something is still very, 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 very fragile at beginning stage. That's when things, the enemy comes in. So try to keep things to yourself. When you have a fight, you go on your knees and you talk about it. And that grows you even closer to each other because you don't depend on calling whoever you want to call to talk about it. But because now you have to face him, you have to talk about the situation with him. You have to sort it out with him and not calling people to get advice on what to do. That, that also kept us very, very close to each other. So basically, if something feels off, you need to talk about it. Yeah. And keep each other's mind very um, intrigued, if I may use that word, in a sense of when you have a new hairdo, you send him the photo with your new hairdo and you ask him, babe, what do you think? How does it look on me? Or you tell him about your daily task. Today, I'm going to the stores. I'm going to do one, two, three. And uh, you get a new outfit, you get new shoes, just wear it on and send it to him. So that's how we used to communicate. We will know about each other's day to day. All right. So he will have my agenda itinerary for the next day. And I will know exactly what he's going to do the, the next day and the weekend as well. He will tell me, listen, this is what's happening on the weekend and vice versa. So we were basically keeping communication key communication key apart from commitment once you have commitment and then communication comes everything else is fine because already commitment you know where you are heading and then communication you just you just open up you know you you each other's friend you become each other's um you become each other's besties so you communicate about the future communicate about the future the weather can come later, but the future, I mean, you need to ask like, okay, so where are we going to stay? What are we going to do? Which house do you prefer to live in? If you haven't bought a house together, uh, how many children would you like? You know, these things are also communicated prior to before you decide to, okay, we're going to get married. You obviously talk about it, but it just helps you to find out more about this kind of topics what he likes, what his favorite color is, you know, things like that. And also a lot of women have this mindset of, no, he's the man, he has to call me first. No, he's the man, he has to. I don't blame them because some of us were raised like that, especially coming from an African background. You are told by your peers that you will not contact a man it makes you look weak it makes you look like you are chasing but when you are in a union and you know that you are going for you are you are stepping towards marriage it shouldn't matter who's calling who you need to check on him you can't always wait for him to be the one phoning checking how was your day calling at night you need to put in the work it's not even uh, a 50 50 it's a hundred hundred because again, like I said, what you want to receive is what you need to give out as well. In the morning, if you wake up earlier, an hour too early than usual, you contact him. You contact him. You phone, babe, how are you? How did you sleep? You know? So that's what kept us going. And yeah, so I stuck there and it was so easy because he made it so easy for me to be in this relationship and to carry on the way we were going on although it was long distance my husband is in the kitchen so if you hear any noise baby so he made it very easy for this relationship to grow and the other thing is i love the things about him that i hated 
So what I mean by that is we all have different things, yeah, in our in our men, in our fiance, in our husbands. We all see these little things sometimes like oh he brushes his teeth and he doesn't put the cap on or he will take off his shirt and he will just leave it wherever, you know, things like that. So when I used to go see him at the place where he would stay when he will come and I'll see these little things and I told myself I have to start loving all these little things. Otherwise, if I have to take them in and start seeing them in the marriage, it's going to start, you know, boom, 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 because we don't hide things from each other. We don't hide how we feel about certain things towards each other. So it was easy for me to just say, you know what, you have to accept him for who he is. And that's how he's going to accept you for who you are. We are two different cultures coming together so there's a huge difference but we need to accept it's each other's differences and it makes things so much easy again it's not perfect it was not a perfect ride but it was so worth it and it wasn't as complicated as some people make it sound everybody has their own experience but we decided to make it worthwhile between him and I in the relationship, he's the romantic one. Like my my husband is very romantic, and also that was one point that like just bought so much fireworks in our long distance relationship because he would always surprise me with little things, although we were so far apart but the things that he will do it just made me feel so close to him you know he's such a romantic guy he would just send flowers from nowhere he will send boxes of chocolates it didn't have to be a special occasions type of thing you know he would just send them and um one i remember one night he just called up and we were watching a movie like the screens together and yeah so things like that that's my husband he's the romantic person in our in our relationship he really did keep keep it so flashing he kept it so heated he kept it so interesting he kept it so he just made it so easy you know he made it so easy for me to just to be in a peaceful and no questions asked and although the goodies were not given but he just made it so easy for 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 for, for the both of us yeah that's how he got this far he's an amazing guy love him my advice to anybody who's in the same situation where i was i just want to wish you firstly all the best all right commitment know where you are know where you're standing and know where you are going that is very 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 important i would advise you to always be alert mentally and be alert emotionally you need to be mature both mental and emotional because things will happen you will have fights things will be said and if you're not emotionally mature you can take it very like okay no i don't like it because he said that and then you just destroy things you destroy a good things because of that so you need to be there for each other you need to support him as much as he needs to support you don't try and be somebody that you are not let him see you at first hand who you are let him know what ticks you off. Let him know what makes you happy. Let him know what jokes he can come with. Let him know to what level he can talk about your side of the family and vice versa. So things like that. Basically, just be transparent towards him. Be transparent towards your future husband. Yeah? My next advice is pray, pray, pray. That's not even an advice. That's like... That's something you need to do above all else. You need to pray about the, about, about the relationship. You need to pray about the um, bride prize ceremony. You need to pray about the marriage preparations. You need to pray about the people that will be there. You need to pray about your cooks, your cake, your your dress, if somebody is sewing your dress, you pray, you plead the blood of, of Jesus over it, yeah? 
because that's where the enemy will attack. Again, he hates marriages. So you need to prepare your battle and weapon while in advance. All right, pray without ceasing. If he doesn't pray, you pray for him. Yeah, you need to always pray before anything. So darling, I really hope that this will help you. I hope we'll see each other again. Establish and all the best. All the best. God first and everything will just work smooth. Bye. So how our long distance relationship went to work. It, it's a lot of work. Uh, we were talking every single day even after a long day of work uh, we were calling and i think also when your connection together is is good and you talk about basically anything everything and you support each other in, in a lot of ways um, then you have a good base to go on and s small things matter also eh? um, for me it was important that oh, Seth had a, uh, is, is smart, okay? he had a good education, so it's very talkative on a good uh, on a good level. So that was very very interesting. So we had always had a lot of things to talk about, and then the desire to or to be together. And when you keep that fire burning, even from a big distance, then you're making steps, and then the next step is action. So take time not only to call but also uh, for the visits and plan the future and if you are aligned in the future plans if you both uh, are okay with that and uh, following the same route having the same ideas same thoughts um, and even when you don't have everything the same are you willing to be a bit flexible that's all right uh, or never mind it's straight center but that won't work and that's what made us, uh, after all these years, are still together. And all that work we did in the past, that we uh, could be together. So, a lot of work, a lot of talking and action. So, and what made me stick to this lady is uh, not only the, the curves. It was very helpful. <laughs> I cannot lie about that. The curves are good. Uh, but also the intellect. Uh, the commitment uh, always there not judging um, whatever problem I had or things I faced uh, I could speak with her about it she was listening, giving advice it helped also that Seth didn't have any kids because at that period I, oh, I don't want anyone with kids because I only make the perfect kids for me myself <laughs> I can laugh about it, but uh, yeah, that's basically a, a thingy. And future wise, uh, a lot of connections. So, in thoughts on what you want in the future, uh, work wise, I didn't have to upkeep her. Um, I didn't want, but also in that period, I, I couldn't. And all those things matching together. She could take care of herself perfectly. Loved it. Uh, and But when we are together, we took care of each other. And loved that too. So when she was in Holland, I do my things. When I was there, she does her things. And I do also my things. So And she did her things also here. So everything was, uh, was good. And physical attraction, very important. It was there, it still is there. So. Keep that one up. Very interesting, interesting and important also. More things. She's got such a sweet, sexy voice. <laughs> that, uh, unless she's angry, because <laughs> then I can put her behind the wallpaper also. <laughs> but she's so so sweet and cute. She can be. She's still, uh, yeah. She knows how to how to write that. And very forgiving, generous, and loving and always there so a lot of small things all put together 
then you get the package. And one very important thing also is she's Christian. She has way more knowledge in the Bible than me. She knows so much. Very nice, very sexy, very sweet. So as a Christian couple, it's good to pray together, to talk about the Bible together. Sometimes I read out of it. I uh, go to church together. Uh, we did a lot, that a lot. Uh, but when you have the same uh, same faith in of who Jesus is and what He can do for you and what He can do for us, and He was there uh, with us, He was guiding us, and we felt that both. And basically, uh, that's also a big big reason, uh, like He's pointing you. This is the one for you. So, and then you have to listen. So, but I love her in bits and pieces. Even when we go to uh, to the valleys, we go through the valleys together and then we go uphill again after that. So, that's it. So friends, now I am going to give also my own tips <laughs> that will help you find the one. But I'm going to go so, so, so fast so that we can end this video. <laughs> Yeah, so tip number one, guys, if you know you are an arrogant lady, just know that you will never ever be able to find a guy on online dating apps, even in real life, because no man will date a lady who is arrogant. No man will date a lady whereby he wants to talk to that lady. He starts getting nervous, like, how am I going to talk to this lady? How is she going to react? the way she is arrogant. <laughs> I know some of you right now are like, that is how I am. <laughs> I've seen my friends getting married and they're all arrogant. <laughs> Guys, when I bring these tips here, it's not that I'm forcing them on you. No, I am only simply telling you what I think will work due to the experience that I have got on online dating apps. So if you want to keep on being arrogant, keep on being arrogant, girl. <laughs> but if you stay for so long, you're not finding anyone, don't be like, what is wrong with me? It's because you are very arrogant. Guys, I've been coming across ladies DMing me the first minute you respond to them then they start being arrogant on you. So I always ask myself, if this lady is very arrogant to me like that, <laughs> what of the guy that she will meet on online dating apps? And I always conclude that this lady will never ever be able to find the one. I've heard stories whereby ladies have found love and later on things goes wrong, this men end the relationship, then you get to find them married to other ladies, even doing YouTube, you know, they've got an interracial couple channel. <laughs> when you watch a channel, here is your guy that you thought was the one to you. So which means the guy was really serious, but maybe you messed up. I don't want to judge you. I don't know you very well, but talk to yourself, please, please. If you consider yourself as a much no lady, girl, it's gonna be very difficult for you to succeed on online dating apps. This is the truth, cause no one knows it all. Even me as Bella, I know you guys have got much respect for me and I respect you too, but the truth is I don't know it all. Every day it is a learning day. Things that you know, maybe I don't know them. I might be so, so good when it comes to online dating apps or when it comes to interracial dating, but maybe when you take me on the other sector, I will be zero. That means I don't know it all. So never ever start chatting with a guy and then you start pretending like you know it all. <laughs> <laughs> the guy will lose interest in you and you will not succeed on online dating apps and even in real life and even to you ladies that we are soon to start the matchmaking before i match you with a guy i should know that you are a very good genuine woman so friends if you are mentally immature you will never ever be able to find a serious guy on online dating apps 
even in real life if a guy gets to know that you are mentally immature he is going to leave you especially you ladies you are in your mid 20s or early 20s you want to date guys in their 50s those guys are mentally mature and you wrote on your online dating profile you are looking for a guy who is mentally mature then you too should be mentally mature don't start bringing dramas if you are a drama queen you will never be able to find a serious guy on online dating apps and even if you find him he will eventually leave you trust me i've seen things happening relationships failing guys these days i also advise men that are dating on online dating apps so i've been getting lots of stories and when i listen to those stories i'm like wow they know how some genuine intelligent mentally mature ladies are suffering to find love on online dating apps and then you find those ladies they are mentally immature they are drama queens all the time trying to cause trouble <laughs> It really annoys me very very much but I always also try my best if there is anything can be done to change that situation so I am here as a sister who loves you to tell you you shouldn't be a drama queen you should be mentally mature please please so that when you find a guy you keep him not you finding a guy it is a success story then after two or three months it's a failure that will be a very big disappointment to me who is always here to give you tips and guide you so dear friends before i end this video i want to use this opportunity to thank leticia charity checks leandro safi alex and agnes thank you so much for accepting to do this collaboration with me may god bless you and to you all that have watched this video thank you so much for watching till now may god bless you please give this video a thumbs up if you have liked it share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something comment below what you think about this video please i would like to know and if you have not watched my other videos please watch them you are going to learn lots lots of things if you have not subscribed what are you waiting for please join the family and thank you for subscribing i love you so much guys you're always here in my heart let us meet in my next video ciao ciao Mwah.